Hello and welcome to another video on using TSM for Classic. Now since my last video there's been more and more updates on TSM and we now have the ability to add our scans into the pool of everybody else's scans and now we've got some historical data which is really really handy. So you will notice we're here on version 4.8.8 and now if you go into your realm data, if you've gone onto their website and selected your own classic realm like we have here on Mirage Raceway, we have actual uh, realm data here that is up to date since the last scan. And so this means we'll have a much more reliable source for our DB market data. Now we don't quite have the EU realm yet, but that will come soon, I'm very sure. So what I wanted to do today was to basically go through setting up TSM from scratch seeing how we can make use of this data, go right from the beginning and then start looking at things, okay, what can we do to make gold? What resources do we have available to us? And move on from there. I'm going to be into like a series over time where I'll develop this further and go deeper and deeper into various aspects of it as I do it myself. So I want to share my, my thinking process as I do it and help with ideas as to what you could implement into your own gold making. So let's start with a fresh TSM. At the moment, I've, uh, I've got a little bit of gold here. I haven't done much in the way of gold making just yet. It's still early days. So I'm going to go into the settings here. And I'm actually going to reset my profile and give me a, a fresh start really on everything. I haven't really done much yet anyway. So I'll go through, reset my profile here. All groups and operations will be reset. And then one of the first things I would do is I want to make sure that I've got as much information as possible. So I'm going to go through and enable as much as I can on the tooltip settings. So I'm going to make sure all of this is turned on. Vendor sell price, vendor buy price, those are very important. The main thing here we're looking at is we want to try and make sure we've got as much information as possible because the more information we have, the better. Value sources. Now, region data tooltip isn't going to be working just yet. But when it does, you can start including some of this in as well main ones here min buyout and market value those are definitely worth doing accounting i would say those would be fine auctioning values crafting values shopping max price don't necessarily need that and then auction database market value display display detail destroy information that would be a useful one to have on and then everything else is on there accounting we have use smart averages for purchase price smart averages is always a useful thing to have because what that does is only take into account the number of items you have in your bags and your bank and works out the average price over that many items as opposed to your historical data of buying something over time and especially in these volatile times with the markets changing still quite rapidly i would suggest keep this on just to keep an idea of your your average buy price will be more current so on here i want a auction sale sound i like to use the uh, cash register for that so i'm going to turn that one on whenever i get a sale that's always nice to hear destroying i'm going to leave this at default for the moment i may have to come back to that and we'll keep everything else here as the default I'm not going to need any custom sources just yet and my now here we've got something interesting under the crafting the default material cost method is the minimum between all of these DB market, crafting, vendor buy, and convert DB market. That's basically if you can convert something into from something else, then it would take that value if it happens to be cheaper. It's taken the minimum out of all of these. Now there's one thing missing here, and that's average buy, because we may want to buy these things off the auction house. So as I used to do in retail, we're going to add in another value here. Average buy. That means if I can actually buy something cheaper on the auction house, because the, at the time I bought it, it may be actually less than the DB market value. So I'm going to add that in, press enter to, um, to fix that. And then my default craft value method, I'm going to keep it the first between either DB min buyout and DB market. I'm not going to change that just yet. And then the macro, we had set this up. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to test to make sure this works. So I'm going to click update existing macro and then shopping. This is a leftover from when I was using auctionator. I want to reset this back to DB market and then we're going to go through here and make sure that's all fine there. All of that is fine. Vendoring is DB market. 
or leave all like that. So that's all of those set as I would um, want them to start off with. Now, by its very nature, this video is going to be quite long, so I'm going to go through as much information as I can. So I'll put time codes in the description below so you can jump to the various parts and come back to this. And then we'll, we'll carry on with a series and keep on adding more and more things in until it's a, a, a complete series on using TSM. So with that set up, let's think about, okay, so, well, we need to make some groups and we need to try and sell something. And what do we want to do? This is the next thing to think about. What am I actually trying to do here? And how am I thinking of going to make gold? Am I going to be collecting things and then selling them on the auction house? Am I going to try using crafting to turn one thing into another? And am I going to be looking for vendor searches as I showed in the other video? Now, obviously, the market is maturing quite rapidly now. So what was working before may not work now. And you always want to kind of adapt to this and try new things out as the the, le the average level of everyone will start to increase and then the access to various things and the things people are doing in the game are going to change over time. So this is always an evolving process. At the moment, my thinking is I'm going to try and sell things that I collect, maybe some BOEs that I don't actually use myself, and then I'm going to try and use my crafting. At the moment, I've got tailoring and skinning. I might drop my skinning and take on enchanting. Even though you can't sell the enchants direct, I think you'd still be able to do a few nice flips with between tailoring and enchanting and then selling the materials perhaps. So first things first, we need to do an auction house scan and then we will go and I've got a macro for this TSM scan. It's the same as typing in slash TSM scan. I'm just going to click my button here and then in the text window, you can't quite see it here but it just says says here, starting a full auction house scan, please allow that time. The main reason we want to do this is we want to add our own data into the pool of TSM. So if nobody does this, then the data will be out of date. So TSM is reliant on all of us using TSM and doing TSM scans. So I'd recommend every time you log in and you're near the auction house is to do the scan and then let that run. So it's been doing that. We don't have the percentage. We used to have a percentage, but it's showing it's processing scan results completed full auction house scan and then that will get processed by the app and then sent to TSM HQ where they'll add it to the pool. So with that done, let's think about um, how we're going to set up our groups. What are we going to do? Now you can import other people's groups, but what I'd suggest is actually build up your own groups from a small starting point and then expand it slowly as you expand your market. That way you're only putting in what you actually need and you're, you're learning as you go and you're adapting as you expand everything as opposed to bringing someone else's in and then not knowing exactly what it does or how it works. That said, I will keep a pace bin of my own groups so you'll be able to import those with the operations if you like just to pick apart and maybe adapt for your own needs. The choice is entirely up to you. So I want to think about my structure here. So I, I'm here with TSM, I've got nothing started. So what do I want to do? Well, with tailoring, we'll have a look and we'll have a look at what we can do at the moment to make a profit. So currently with tailoring, I'm at 107. Let's bring open the TSM window. Now we can see here that TSM is telling me that some things that I've learned at the moment could potentially be a profit. We've got here, I'm looking here at the profit of things based on the market cost and woolen bags could potentially be a profit of one silver there. Let's have a look at how that could work. Bolt of woolen cloth has a TSM crafting, a crafting cost of one silver 30 based off the wool cloth which will come out of the buy price, most likely of my bolt of woolen cloth. You go to my wool cloth here and we can see that my purchase price, because that's in the tooltips there. So vendor sell price is 33 copper. My min, max and average of my purchase price is actually 60 copper. And looking at the min buyout on at the moment is 66 copper with a market value currently telling me of one silver and six copper. Now we've got TSM auctioning values for each of these because we've got the default set at the moment. I haven't changed anything in those just yet. And then the important thing to look down there is the TSM crafting mat cost is coming out. You can see there it's coming out at 60 copper. 
and you can see that is my average buy price. So it's not the min buyout, which is 66 copper. It's based off my average buy price of 60 copper, which is how I've been getting the hold of my woolen cloth at this point, which is why it's currently telling me it's a profit. So this could be something I could potentially sell. The same with linen bags, although the profit margins on those are really quite tight at 46 copper. I may actually be better off vendoring those. You can see some other things worth considering here. Barbaric linen vest is one silver 81. This simple linen boots seems way, way too high at 31 gold. I imagine that the, the market value of that being at 31 gold to me seems just overly, overly high. So obviously we're still at this early stage. The market prices haven't quite settled down or they're being skewed by someone else posting them up artificially high. At this stage, we don't have any region data to cross-reference against, so we don't have a broader average to look at across several servers. So take your time, look at something, and double-check whether that's a price that you think is reasonable, think why it would be priced at that, and come to your own conclusions and make decisions your own way. Don't rely purely on these numbers. So if I was to start up a group here, I would maybe consider making some woolen bags and seeing if I could get a profit going on those. I'd also have to bear in mind the uh, the crafting cost of these, not only the crafting cost but also the, the listing fees of these. So let's take one of these as an example, let's see if we can we can build on this. So woolen bag at the moment, we'll need some more wool because we only have, how much woolen cloth do we have? We only have three bolts of woolen cloth on us. So let's work backwards from this. We also need to get hold of some woolen cloth. So going back into TSM, let's maybe have a shopping operation. So we go into groups here. Now we don't have anything here at the moment. So let's start thinking about how we're going to structure this. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to call this group. I'm going to make a new group. I'm going to call it tailoring. And then inside there, I'm going to add another subgroup. I'm going to call that cloth. I'm going to make a second group here. I'm going to call this one bags. So we're trying to think about our structure, what's going to make sense to us. So inside my cloth, now we have some linen cloth on us already with an average purchase price of 22. Now if you remember from my previous video, I was looking at linen cloth and doing a vendor sell on linen cloth into linen bags and then being able to make a small profit on those. I still think that's a good idea here, so I'm going to add that in now. This is going to have its own group, because it's going to have its own operation based on this. So I'm going to call that one linen cloth, and then I'm also going to make, for the moment, as we're at small scale, I'm going to make a separate subgroup for each one. Wool cloth, and maybe even silk cloth would be a good one as well. This is kind of where I'm at at the moment with my tailoring, still early stages. I'd always recommend build this up as you go, as you're learning the professions. This will happen with any profession, but at the moment I'll use tailoring as an example. So now we've got some silk cloth, woolen cloth, and linen cloth. Now, I might like to order these in the, in the level that they might come up. So one thing you could do if you want to change the order of these, it's, it's alphabetical. Oops, didn't mean to drag that in. Let's just drag that back out. So if we go, linen cloth's the first one. So if we add in, say, a one dot like that, linen cloth will be there. Wool cloth is the second one in the, in the hierarchy of cloth. So I'm going to add a two in there again. And so now automatically that comes in in alphabetical order. So now silk cloth. This is just a way of organizing things. Obviously do whichever works well for you. So now we've got all the cloth here. And then I need to add them in each one. So linen cloth, I have some. So I'm going to add that item in. There we go. And the woolen cloth, I don't actually have any here on me at the moment. I've only got the bolt of woolen cloth. Uh, silk cloth I do have though. I managed to pick some of that at below vendor price. That vendor sale price is one silver fifty. And I've actually bought these for actually one silver. So those are really reasonably priced at the moment. But we don't have anything for wool cloth. So two options here. We could either go and buy some wool cloth and import it that way from our bags, or we can find out what the item ID is and import that in. 
much as the way you'd import other people's groups in. And this is really handy if you're going to build up some some other things, uh, which I'll go into uh, in a in a future video. So the two websites I want to bring up here. So we can use a couple of websites here. The first being Wellhead, and then we can go into the classic one here and just click on the tab there and just look for classic things, which is going to be useful to us. And we can look up here, wool cloth. And now we have wool cloth and bolt of woolen cloth as two options here. Now, if I wanted just the item ID, we could just click on this. And you can see here the item ID is coming up here as 2592. Or the other thing we can do, and this works particularly well if we've got a number of things in our search list, is we go into the TSM group maker. So we go into here. So what this group maker does is it allows you to copy links from other places like Wowhead and other other places, and it will automatically filter through and take the item numbers out of that, which is a really handy way of bringing in a mass number of items. So say for example, we had here, say we wanted to do both of these, and uh, so you just select the text that's got these two in. Don't worry about selecting all the other things, it's just these two that we're interested in. And Control c copy that. And then we go on to here and click anywhere in this middle box here, and paste it in there. So we've got wool cloth and bolt of woolen cloth. And automatically it's filtered through two item IDs here of item 2592 and 2997, which is really, really handy for just um, grabbing a whole load of stuff and filtering out the item numbers. So what I'd suggest here is we're going to control C, copy that. We don't need both of these, but this is a good example. And then we go back onto here into our group and we go into import export and we can go here to wool cloth and we can select here and paste in those two item ids and advanced options we can just uh, ignore these for the moment move already grouped items include operations obviously there's no operations here this is just item numbers and we'll click import here and it's telling me there's two items bolt of woolen cloth and wool cloth we could decide to not do the bolt of woolen cloth and take that off here and then click confirm and now when we go to our group and we go to wool cloth you can see the wool cloth is in here as our group we've got silk cloth here and linen cloth here so that's really quite a nice easy way to uh, to grab a, a, a number of things and we could do the same thing with bags let's say we wanted to expand our bags but we don't have any bags really made yet so we'll go back to wowhead so I'm going to go into the database, go into professions and skills. I'm going to go into tailoring. I'm going to look for, here's a list of all the different tailoring recipes we can do. Maybe we can filter this a little bit further. So if I just change this search to bags, we've got all the different kind of bags we could possibly make. And we have a number of ones here, maid weave bag, green woolen bag, woolen bag, red linen bag and linen bag here so maybe we're not interested in these uh, specialist ones here at the moment maybe you want to just look at all of these ones here so let's just select all of those all the way up to rune cloth bag Control c copy that and then we can clear this click on the clear go back here and paste that lot in and now you can see tsm group maker has taken all of these links and turned them into a whole load of item ids here I think it might have even taken the cloth and bits and pieces here. So let's have a look at that when we bring it in. So let's select all of those, copy those, and we'll go to our bags and we're going to import all the bags. So let's go import export and let's paste. Let's select the bags first and then we're going to click paste into there and then click import. So yes, it has included all the other things, the threads and everything else. So we'll have to filter that out a little bit more, perhaps. We don't want all of the threads and everything else like that, because a lot of these we won't need. Let's start up here at the top and just remove the things we don't need and then drop down there. And then we've got all those, just the bags there that we're potentially interested in. We'll click confirm on there. And now in our bags group, if you go in here up to the bags group, we've got the number of bags here that we could potentially make. Now some of these I can't make yet. Missed out the rune cloth bag there, I've just noticed. 
Not sure if that was in my original one. So let's go back and see if we can get something coming from here. Rucloth bag. This is the bit we want the text here for the link. Let's copy that. Obviously with one item it's um, there are better ways of just finding the item number and importing that yourself. But if you have got a number of things, this is a really handy way of bringing things in. So I'm going to copy that in and then I'm going to import that string into here. Click import, room cloth bag, yes please. And we'll add that in. So this is, we're thinking ahead a little bit now into the future as to other things we could possibly make. But at the moment, we're just breaking this up and just trying to structure what we've got and make some sense out of it into what kind of operations we might want to do. So from this, now I'm not really interested in these mage weavens and the other colors of the woolen bags at the moment. I'm gonna just go with the main linen bag and woolen bag. I'm gonna make a separate subgroup for those. So we'll do a linen bag. Not that crafting one of those would probably be that profitable. And now I've got a woolen bag as well. Now these don't have the items in them. We need to bring them from the parent. So the parent item has them all in here at the bottom. So for woolen bag, we can bring that one in and drag that one in there. And linen bag, find that from the parent and we'll pop that one in there. And then we can keep the other bags in there as a potential thing for the future. But right now we're just gonna focus on these ones. We could take those ones out of the parent. We could remove these, these ones we don't need at this stage and then add them in when we do want to do something with them and that will keep it clean. So there's different ways you could look at this. So now we want to start thinking about operations. We want to think about uh, shopping operations. We want to think about crafting operations and what we're going to actually do with these things. So let's take the woolen bag example at the moment. So we want to make a woolen bag. We think we might be able to sell some. We need to get hold of some woolen cloth though. So let's go to our wool cloth and what kind of price do we want for these? So we can have a look at this and think about, okay, well, at the moment, my average purchase price is 60 copper, which means that the mat cost is coming in at 60 copper. What's the maximum I'm really going to want to look at in buying this for? Considering that the, the actual profit on this woolen bag is only 1 silver 40. Now, currently it's telling me the min buyout is 7 silver 80. So that's a little bit higher, actually. Uh, the vendor sell price, though, is three silver. So I certainly don't want to be selling them for any any less than that. So we'll need to factor that in when we start doing things. So going back to the wool cloth, let's think about the price for this. Let's do a, a basic shopping operation for this at the moment. Let's use our average buy price, which is currently 60 copper. So we'll go to our group operations. And so the we currently have all the defaults here and we'll keep those in for the moment. But we're gonna start customizing this up. So for our shopping, let's override this and add our own operation in. Let's create a new one. And this new operation is going to be called average buy. And so the shopping operation here is rather than using DB market, we're going to look at our average buy price. Now, maybe we don't have an average buy price for something. So let's add in a first, which means Look first at the average buy price. If you can't find an average buy price, if we haven't had one before, then look at DB market. So that is looking at the market value at the moment. Obviously, this is only related to our server. We're not using anything like DB region market at this stage, but that should work quite well as a shopping operation because what will happen here is when we look for things, it will show us our percentage on the side as a percentage of our average buy. So we can quickly and easily see whether something's above what we'd normally buy it for or less than what we normally buy it for. Now, whilst I'm here, I'm gonna make another shopping operation for our linen cloth. From our calculations last time, we worked out that linen cloth under 28 copper means that we could make linen bags and actually vendor them for a small profit. So what I'm gonna do is do a separate shopping operation here. Go override the parent operation under shopping we're going to create a new one again and this is kind of specialist so i'm going to actually name it linen cloth 28 copper and then this time our price is actually going to be rather than anything else it's going to be just 28 copper now we could untick show auctions above max price 
that would be quite handy if we just want to quickly buy things. But I'm going to keep this selected because my thinking is I want to, when I do a shopping operation, I want to look at the whole market. I want to start getting a gauge for what the prices are like on this server. And then whilst I'm here, I'm also going to do a sniper operation specifically for linen cloth. Because if I am running a sniper operation, I want to be able to pick up any linen cloth that's under 28 copper. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to sniper. I'm going to override the default. I'm going to create my own, create new operation. Now the default is all of this big long string. And you'll notice that this is using DB region market average, which is no good to us anyway. So the default isn't really much use at this stage. Once you do have a DB region market average, then this will be more and more useful. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out all of this big long string, delete that out. I'm just going to put in 28 copper. Press enter for that. And call this linen cloth, 28 copper. So whilst this operation is has got the same name as my shopping operation, this one is in the sniper section. So it's a slightly different setup. So now we have our shopping operation and our sniper operation for the linen cloth and we have a shopping operation for our wool cloth. We also want to have a look at silk cloth, see if we can buy some of that. We could just stick with the, the default shopping operation that we've got here, which is currently DB market. That could be useful. So I'm going to leave that one as it is for the moment. So let's see if we can run a shopping operation and see how these actually work out. So we'll click on this and then we'll click on shopping. Now you'll notice that there's shopping operations for everything, both linen bags, wool bags and everything because there's a default in there. Now sometimes you don't want that, sometimes you want this to be nice and clean. So there is a case for not having the defaults and just using your, your own ones for specific things. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go back into my settings and I go into my groups and my operations. I'm actually going to delete the default shopping operation. And whilst I'm here, the sniper operation wasn't working for us at the moment. So I'm actually going to delete that one as well. And then for actual completeness, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all of these. The reason being that when I'm looking at my operations in my group, when I don't have any of these, it's actually quite clean to be able to see which ones I have a special operation for. So I'm going to take all of these, I'm going to take the default one as well, and I get rid of all these because for me personally, I like to have a tighter control over what I'm doing and when. I don't want to just uh, throw things on with the default settings. So now when I go to my groups, you can see here, if I go to silk cloth and now we can see there's nothing added here. So we know that nothing's happening here. So what I'd want to do here, and when I look at wool cloth, you can see it's just got average buy assigned to it. If I look at linen cloth, it's got both a shopping and a sniper operation assigned to it. So for me, it's kind of a much cleaner layout and I can see what's what. So what I'm gonna do here is silk cloth, we're gonna add in another shopping operation. And then this time we're gonna add in a new one Actually, we don't need to add a new one. We can use our average buy one because that one does default to DB market. So I'm gonna add in the operation here. Now there's another thing you could do is rather than doing that to all of these individually, we could actually apply this to the group above it. And then if we go to the shopping here and go average buy for this, then anything in this cloth group will get an average buy shopping operation unless we override it. So for instance, in the shopping operation for linen cloth, we're overriding it with linen cloth 28. With wool cloth, we're overriding it with the same one. So we could effectively get rid of that one and turn off the override. And then the average buy one comes through. And then for the same for silk cloth, because it's got it in here in the cloth main group, that it comes through into the silk cloth. So what does that mean? Well, basically what that means is when we go back to our shopping search here, the bags aren't in here. So our list is, is kind of cleaner. So we're only shopping for things we actually want to look for. So here we can either select these individually or we can select the whole cloth group and then we can run a shopping scan. And then TSM will go through and have a look. 
Okay, we're done scanning. So now I can have a look here and we've got linen cloth here is the cheapest it's showing me is 107% of my average buy price. So average buy price here is 22 copper, which is what my mat cost is coming out at, which is why it's probably not worth me buying any of those at the moment. The silk cloth is actually coming in at 86% of DB market. Uh, DB market being two silver 27 and it's coming in at 196. I'm not sure whether it's worth buying at that price or not. I haven't looked into the crafting costs of bags because I can't make them yet. And the other thing I haven't looked into is the silk bandages, which sometimes you can vendor for a higher price. Although I suspect that that market has been and gone. But wool cloth is looking quite reasonable. We have here a an actual market price of one silver and six and these are coming in at 80 copper so let's see if i can buy a few of these up because i do need a few of them so 80 copper is actually quite a bit less than everything else here now we've got 58 single stacks here now hopefully my control macro will allow me to um, buy all these up so if i hold control down and keep the mouse pointer away from the actual window itself and then i'm just moving the mouse wheel down and our macro is buying them one at a time. So what we can actually do is speed this up a little bit and buy all these single stacks really easily at 80 copper each. And from this we can make some wool bags. Just waiting for it to find the rest of them. It does look like, if we scroll up here you can see, you can see TSM is actually failing to find the other auctions. So that could be that someone else has just bought these up as well. So whilst I was able to buy some of them, it looks like the rest of them have been bought up before I got a chance to get those. But still, 80 copper is a nice price, I'm thinking. Yeah, it looks like they've all gone now. So we did manage to buy some of them. So I'm going to go and pick those up in a moment. So then we need to turn this into wool bags. So we need to think about a crafting operation for that. So we go back into our TSM here and go into groups and we'll go into woolen bags and then the group operations here nothing has been assigned to it just yet so we're going to make a crafting operation so I'm going to override the base at the moment I'm going to make something new here create a new operation so how many bags do I want to make I'm this is still early stages we don't know how quickly they're going to sell we don't know what kind of listing fee we're going to have so it's very much a experimental stage at this at this point. So I think uh, the maximum I'm going to want to have here is five. So I'm going to change that to five and a minimum profit, which means I won't craft them unless I've got that minimum profit. Now, I don't know how much the listing fee is on these. We'll have to make one and have a look and see what it comes out at. And then we can adjust this accordingly. So my minimum profit, well, we did see that the profit was coming in at one silver. So maybe let's take a, we can either use a percentage of crafting, which is what I used to use. So normally I would do something like an extra 10% on top of the crafting. That works as a minimum profit. So you take the, uh, the crafting cost of the item, adds 10% onto it. And basically if the price of the bags at the moment is less than that, then it won't craft them. So we're going to do a, let's rename this, crafting 10%, we'll call that, crafting, creating, crafting 10%, there we go, and we'll change that. I'm also going to want to think, whilst we're here, let's think about a auctioning operation for our woolen bags. Once we've made one, we want to put one on. So we don't actually have a default auctioning operation anymore now. I removed that. Now, interesting, looking at that, our woolen bag has changed. Our crafting cost has now come in at 6 silver 40 because our bolts of woolen cloth are coming in at 5 silver 40 as a crafting cost. Let's go have a look at that and work out what the actual averages are. So I'll go pick up the ones from the mail and we'll make sure we use the TSM mail interface to open those up. And that way TSM will register the average price of the woolen cloth. So we'll go into here to our mailbox, make sure this changes to the regular one. So at 80 copper each, 
Currently our mat cost for woolen cloth is at 60 copper. So if we open up all our mail now, so now we have a mat cost of 80 copper. And will this affect our tailoring? Let's have another look at it. So yes, look at this now. So where it was previously at 60 copper a profit, it's no longer a profit at 80 copper as a mat cost. So this is the kind of thing you want to look into and say, okay, well, that in that case, it's not worth me making them because I'll sell them at a loss. As it stands at the moment, I need one more woolen bag for myself. So I'm going to make one anyway. But unless I can get my mat cost for woolen cloth cheaper than that, so unless I can get it back down to 60 copper, it's not worth me buying that. Well, it may be worth me buying it for something else, but at the moment for this, the woolen bag is not worth it. Because the item value for a woolen bag is 4 silver 45, and they're currently, we have a, a vendor sell price of 3 silver. We could potentially put them on higher, because some people are putting them on there. You can see someone's got them on for 4 silver 45 exactly. So maybe we could still sell some at a profit. So what I'm looking at here is the crafting cost is telling me 7 silver 20. Whereas here the item value is telling me 4 silver 45. So there's something different here. There's a there's a discrepancy. Let's have a look at the see the crafting cost there is telling me 8 silver 20. It could be down to the bolt of woolen cloth. So the bolt of woolen cloth is looking at a mat cost of 2 silver 40 with a min buyout of 2 silver 20. So this is where you need to keep an eye on the the prices of everything going into it and thinking okay which is the correct one here which is going to give me a profit because we haven't been doing this often enough we haven't got some number real solid numbers to go on so let me have a look at this so crafting cost of bolt of woolen cloth is currently telling me here that it's two silver 40. the mat cost is the same as two silver 40 and one bolt of woolen cloth is three of the wool cloth, which would be correct. That's three times. So the two silver 40 is three times 80 copper. So that makes sense. We're going to work our way mathematically up this. Just double check our numbers. So a bolt of woolen cloth is currently costing me two silver 40. If I can buy bolts of woolen cloth for less than two silver 40, then actually that's a better price for me. Two silver 20. And then that would give me a different crafting cost of the woolen bag. The woolen bag being three bolts of woolen cloth so that's 720 for the bolts of woolen cloth which is correct and then a fine thread which is an extra silver which gives me a crafting cost of 8 silver 20 which means that's a definite negative profit when it comes to making a woolen bag because so the market value there is telling me 6 silver 17. Let's go have a look at the auction house and just see how many are on for that price and then we can see whether this is actually a viable operation to go for anyway. My suspicion is because it's such a saturated market people are get selling these for a lot less. So let's go back over here. Now we don't have a shopping operation for our woolen bags. So there's a couple of things we could do here. We could make a shopping operation just so we can have a look at those or we could actually make one and then shift click it. As I need to make one anyway I'm going to go ahead and do that. So going into the tailoring here, I need some fine thread, which means I need to go back and visit the tailoring vendor. I'm going to pick out one fine thread, and then I can make one wooden bag, as I need one of these anyway. This is handy, and it gives me a skill up, which is also handy. Then back to the auction house. Okay, so with the shopping tab open here, if I shift right click the woolen bag it will automatically do a woolen bag exact shopping search. So we can see here there's lots of woolen bags here at below my current crafting cost because my woolen cloth mat cost is too high at 80 copper. So in order to get my prices down to here I'd have to be buying it much much cheaper. So because my crafting cost for a woolen bag at the moment is coming at 8 silver 10. So if we were to have a look here, 8 silver 10, for me to get a profit would be coming in at this kind of level, 8 silver 10, 
which means all of these bags will have to sell first before I can even get a sale of that. And I imagine if I went here and I actually clicked on this and went to post at this operation, so we have a deposit price of 60 copper for the 8 hour version, 15 copper for the 2 hour version, and 1 silver 80 for 12 hour. I thought that was actually 24 hour, but I may be wrong there. So looking at that, 8 silver 40 would really be my minimum price here. I'm not going to post it here at that. I really need to be up here, 8 silver 50 ideally, if I was going to post one here just to allow for that extra one. But then the problem being is, am I going to be able to actually get a sale with all of these other ones coming in here? Most likely not. So it would look like the market for woolen bags is, at this stage, saturated unless I can get wool cloth much cheaper. So what I think I need to do is get some more tailoring recipes and see if there's other things I can make that's a, a better profit margin for me. I suspect I'm gonna to have to go up to where the uh, silken bags are or the room cloth bags even which is going to mean i'm going to have to level up a little bit higher before i can do that but for the sake of completeness let's say we wanted to post these on and let's get an operation set up for that so i'm going to go here onto my onto my settings and go into my groups and i go for woolen bag i'm going to have a group operation here so we do have a crafting operation now I'm going to add in a auctioning operation. Now let's have a look at the things we have here. So see that interesting here, this auction duration is 2, 8 and 24. I do believe it was 24 and not 12. So we'll have to double check with TSM which is the correct one there. Because if you look here on the standard one, it's 2, 8 and 24. So that's the, that's the correct numbering between the auction house length, not 2, 8 and 12. I'm sure that will get updated in a future version. So let's go back here and we'll go in here we'll go into woolen bag and we'll make a group operation. So we've got our new operation here, we're going to go into the settings here and we'll go into our posting. So post cap size, the number, maximum number we want to post. Uh, we could keep this at 5 for the moment as a test, stack size of 1, uh, keep this amount in bags, we'll leave that at the moment. I think for the purpose of this, we knew the deposit cost of that was 60 copper. So let's have a look at what our price would be on this. So this default isn't probably going to be much use to us here because we've got lots of DB region markets in here at the moment. And I think it would be worth just using the percentages that we do need to have a look at. So things we do need to look at here is vendor sell. We don't want to sell for any less than the vendor sell price. So vendor sell is the minimum we want to go. So we want to go, the minimum price is going to be the maximum between these. So it's, it's slightly odd thinking, but the maximum vendor sell, and then we don't want to sell it for any less than our crafting cost. So let's take into account crafting. So that could be a basic operation. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. So max vendor sell crafting. There we go, that came in. Must have been down to spelling more than anything else. So we could actually look at those as a very basic operation there, but we want to just add a little bit more onto that because vendor sell and crafting doesn't really take into account that uh, deposit cost. What I usually like to do is just add a little bit of percentage onto each of those. So let's say for example, 110% vendor sell and 110% craft, oops, that's 11% crafting, 110% crafting. So that just boosts up both of those values by a little amount. Now what's also useful is whilst you're thinking of these figures is if you actually bring up your bag and then you can hover over this whilst you're looking at this and making the prices and you can have a look at the minimum price there is now telling me 8 silver 91. So if we were to do that and 
our minimum price here. If we don't want to post them on, if it's below the minimum price, then we could just don't post items, or we could say actually post it at the minimum price. You never know, someone might actually buy it at that. So let's go further down here and let's adjust this a little bit more. So as I like to keep everything kind of the same, using percentages of the same thing means that one won't be higher than the other. So let's have a look. We Notice we're not using DB Market here at the moment. We may want to add DB Market in here as another as another value source. So maybe we don't want to go too too much below, say, 80% of the DB Market value. Let's add that in as well. And then let's change this and do our maximum price. So we've got percentages here. So the maximum price, maybe it's something like we'll whack up these percentages here. So say 300% vendor sell, 300, not 3,000, 300% crafting, or 200% DB market, whichever is the bigger of those three. So again, looking at our tooltip here, actually if I move this back, we can have a look here. If I move that there, then I can move that across more easily. If I swap that one round, I can do it even more. There we go. Then we can look at the tooltips here. So looking at the tooltip for the woolen bag, the maximum price there is telling me 36 silver which is going to be the highest of those, I wonder. Is that going to be the 300% crafting? Let's try... Uh, or oh, that could be vendor sell. No, 300% vendor sell is 18 silver, so it's not going to be that. Market is 617. Maybe that hasn't updated yet. Let's carry on. Let's do this one. We'll copy that. We'll change that to post at maximum price. And then we'll paste this one in. And so for an average one, Let's say we didn't want to go more than 200% vendor sell or as a standard 150% crafting, maybe 180, that would be better. And DB market, we want to keep it maybe something like 120% DB market. As our three figures there. So now that's updated. You can see the woolen bag has now got a max price of 24. So, oh, I was looking at the wrong one, wasn't I? I was looking at the, the normal one. So now we have a minimum price of 8 silver 91, a normal price of 14 silver 58, and a maximum price of 24 silver. But as you can see here, comparing that with the min buyout and the market value, we are way overpriced at this stage. So that's not going to do us any good unless we can get either bolts of woolen cloth bought directly for less than what they are at the moment, which is currently 7 silver 20, which is based off our mat cost. So unless I can get wool cloth much cheaper, it's not worth me currently making these and selling them. But for the purposes of setting up operations, this is a worthwhile exercise just to show you various things. Just name this correctly. Crafting, vendor, DB market as a standard. We'll just call it that for the moment. And eight hours we'll do there and those are all there. So we'll leave that at the moment. What I need to do is actually expand on my tailoring a little bit more and then see if I can find myself some much nicer things to craft that give me much better profit margins perhaps. So at this stage I'm going to leave it. I'm going to come back to this and build on it some more and look into some other things like doing BOEs or other professions like enchanting. But hopefully that will just give you an idea as to how to get started. Uh, exciting changes with the new updates of TSM. So hopefully once we get some region market averages in there as well, we can make use of those prices. It's all going to be interesting. If you do have any questions, pop a comment below. And then what I'm going to do is expand on this as I expand my profession and just go into it a bit more detail and see if we can make some gold and look into other methods that we might be able to use and expand it from there. So until next time, happy gold making, and I'll see you very soon.